Today's video is about breaking down three of my all-time favorite Foo Fighters groups. Art of Drumming is not just a YouTube channel, but also a free platform where you can find numerous drum-related courses filmed by major international artists. Head on over and join our growing community. Hey, it's Andy here and welcome to the Art of Drumming YouTube channel. Today it's all about one of the greatest rock bands of the last 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 years, the Foo Fighters. And their drummer Taylor Hawkins, for me, is one of the best when it comes to finding the right groove for each and every song. And also he's great in just laying the right attitude and the right energy into every groove. So the grooves themselves aren't that difficult or they're mainly pretty simple grooves, but the way he plays them, man, he makes them sound so interesting. And this is what I want to show you today. Let's get started right away with the first groove. The first song for this video is The Pretender. All the figures he plays, the groove, the snare part, there's nothing difficult about that. It's just playing quarter notes on the snare, then he's adding the bass drum, and then he's switching to the hi-hat, adding a backbeat. What stands out about this for me is that the groove is simple and the orchestration is simple, but the effect it has with taking it from the first level to the second level by adding the bass drum and then to the third by switching to the hi-hat, this effect is outstanding. And playing all this with the attitude he has and with the energy he lays into every hit is outstanding. So what you can take away from this song from the arrangement he uses in this drum part is that what you play does not have to be difficult if you just work with the right orchestration and play it with the right attitude and with the right energy. And just by playing this simple groove, he drives the band and pushes them forward so that the energy really ends up in your room with your speakers, with your headphones, whatever. You have to move to this music. So just because it's so much fun, let me play it once again for you before we go to the next groove. Now let's go on with a completely different groove for the song Everlong. And some of the tools that we've just talked about with orchestration and stuff, he uses them in this song as well. So if you listen to the intro, he starts with playing only the hi-hat, then he adds the bass drum, and then he switches to the full, full groove. What really stands out about this song is that the 16th note groove stays the same for a pretty long part of the song and that this groove really sets the mood for the song. So if you want to play this song, you have to master the fast 16th note high groove first. So let me start with the most basic 16th note groove there is, just one and three on the bass drum, two and four on the snare and alternating hands on the hi-hat without any accents or anything. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you're struggling with this figure, it might be an idea to start with the hands first and then adding the bass drum. But now let's take this as a starting point. Now, the first thing Taylor Hawkins does is he plays accents on the hi-hat on all quarter notes. Of course, you have the snare accent, where you already have an accent, but now on one and three he adds an additional accent on the hi-hat. Now a bit more up to the speed of the song. If you got your hands sorted out, you got the accent going and this is not a problem for you, it's time to add the bass drum figure. So now, without too much talking, let me get into the groove with the bass drum figure, once in a slower tempo and then up to the original speed. Of course, throughout the song he plays some variations of this bass drum figure. So in the intro part, the first verse for example, there, is, there are a few strokes less and he only plays one of the double strokes. But then, going through the song, this is the main groove for this tune. So with this sorted out, let's go on to my third favorite Taylor Hawkins groove. Now the third song I want to mention is Times Like These and especially the intro is very interesting. Now the intro might feel a little weird and a little off and that's because the intro is in 7-4 and the rest of the song is mainly in 4-4. Now before we get into this odd time signature, let me quickly just play the groove for you and what the groove would sound like if it was a regular 4-4 groove. So the basic structure of this groove is very simple. You have a quarter note hi-hat, backbeat on 2 and 4 on the snare, and the bass drum is simply filling in all the eighth notes in between the backbeat. So now how do you get from this 4-4 groove, from this simple groove, to such an interesting sounding 7-4 groove? And the answer is pretty simple. Every second bar you take away the last quarter note. And so you get from 8 quarters to 7 quarters. Now how does he do the transition from those shortened bars to the next one. And every time the seven quarter figure ends, he just adds a little snare fill with two snare hits. All the tools he uses are pretty simple, but what he comes up with sounds super interesting and is a lot of fun to play and listen to. So now that we know what he's doing, let me just demonstrate the groove quite slow for you. You can use this same method for all other time signatures. So if you want to create a 5-4 groove, for example, or a 7-8 groove, you either have to add one quarter note on the end or simply take away one eighth note. So just take your 4-4 groove and try to convert it into different time signatures. It's super interesting what you end up with and what ideas come out of that. So to sum this whole thing up, Taylor Hawkins for me isn't about being that 
much of a show-off drummer, about playing super difficult stuff, but about playing the right groove for the right song. And whenever I see him play, the attitude and the energy that's coming out of his hands, out of his face, out of his whole body is just outstanding. And what you can take away from, from his playing and from the groove he creates is sometimes it doesn't have to be complicated to be good and to drive the band, to be recognizable and to just drive the whole music. What are your favorite Foo Fighters grooves? Which ones did I forget and which ones do you think I should mention in another video, for example? Let us know in the comments and subscribe for more videos like this one.